physical nature affected your team, and if so, is that a concern going forward? Well, they they did exactly what we thought we talked about they would do. I mean, we knew they would uh, be very physical with, with Grant, which we expected that, which he sees that a lot. And uh, the fact is, they you know we didn't uh, respond back, and uh, to their again to their credit, they did it from start to finish, and we uh, we just never got going. We didn't get any flow offensively. And, but we didn't play together either. That was a big part of it. The shots that we were taking and uh, the things that we were not doing. Uh, I mean, you were there. You, you know, it was a great atmosphere. Everything was what you wanted to be. The stage, and, but we just didn't answer the call with what we should have done. And but again, I'm not taking anything away from Kentucky because they, they forced those issues. And, and uh, but we've got we'll learn from it. We have to learn from it. And, or you asked me that I'm concerned about it going forward. I'm only concerned about it if we don't realize that uh, we've talked about it for a couple of weeks now, what we need to do to get better, and we don't know it by now, we can be better after what happened the other night. Zeke, can I look at Justin, from the tape, after looking at the tape, we're getting a second look at the game, anything that stuck out other than what you had already Discuss Saturday, and also how's the team responded initially from what you've had. How many inter much interaction you've had with them since there? The no, no, nothing. One bit stood out other than what we thought during the game and what we thought was going on, and, and how did the team respond when we walked in? And, and I asked the team, I said, "Now, do you feel any different today than you did two days ago or a week ago when we were, you know, won a lot of games in a row?" And I thought one of the most mature, mature answers I've ever heard was Jordan Bone said, "Yeah, coach." I do feel different because I'm really excited about going to practice tomorrow. That's what he said. I'm excited about practice. I, I know we've got to get better. You've been saying it. And uh, that was one of the most mature things I've heard from anybody in a long, long, long time. The fact that uh, we felt like if they really, really wanted to learn from this, they would be eager to watch the tape and see themselves doing things that they know that uh, they shouldn't be doing. And uh, But his response is in, you know, the excitement going forward and seeing how much better we could be as a basketball team. Rob, Grant, and Gene. I mean, Coach, Coach, just to expand on that, do you feel like because you've got so many mature veteran guys that, you know, they, they were probably embarrassed Saturday night? Yeah, and, and, and they should have been. That, that will help, yeah. you know, the bounce back factor? They should have been because, you know what, uh, you know, on the outside there's so much that goes on that people, unless you're on the inside every day, you really don't know what's going on with the vibe of the team. We've been talking about it, and I talked about it with you guys, rebounding. And, you know, we, we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. But yet we're winning games, and, and did they take heed to it? They didn't. They have to now. And that's what it, it, it gets down to. And they would all tell you that in their own mind, some way, somehow, they were getting lulled into thinking that we could just get by with what we were doing. And so I think that's a, a human reaction. But the fact that they, they're able to admit it, I think, is what you're talking about, Rob, is where the maturity comes in. They were able to see that we were beaten soundly and thoroughly because we didn't do the things that, that go that go into winning. And, you know, we didn't uh, play hard enough. We weren't physical enough. We didn't uh, execute. We didn't do anything well. It was all everybody thinking I can do this by myself. And they found out, and they all admitted it, which is a good thing. I mean, one of the first ways of getting better is you're able to admit that you have a problem and now are you mature enough to go fix it. And they've said all the right things. Now we'll see if they're mature enough to go do it. Because went to Alabama last year and lost a pretty one-sided game. And if you won five out of six from there, do you think there are similarities from that experience to this one? You know what? I haven't thought about it. I should have uh, talked to you earlier. I thought I probably could have used that with the team yesterday. But you know what? The fact is, and I know you guys get uh, probably tired of me saying it, it's today. You've got to live in the moment. And uh, and you start thinking ahead, are you are you – or you're still living in what you did yesterday. And I don't think there's any question that they, our guys were drifting without the real focus that we needed. And uh, if it takes something like that to wake you up, so be it. And you hate for it to happen, but it happens. It happens in real life. And when something comes along that's unexpected and it happens and you just it makes you really assess some things. And yesterday in the film, they, they understood. and. Uh, I hope what you're saying is going to happen. I hope we can, we can uh, again, get going back where I can be the team that I know that we can be. Uh, Rick, you know, how much easier is it to get guys to you know, kind of understand maybe things that you actually been doing during the winning streak after a loss? How much easier is it to well, get it, a point oh, it, time? It, Believe me, it's easier, believe it or not, because, again, I mean, 
I felt like it had been building. Uh, we kept using the word, hey, it's going to bite us. You guys don't understand the new point. And, and you know what? And we did. We got bitten really, really hard. And uh, but we talked about it uh, for at, at least two weeks about rebounding, about playing defense, about playing hard, about practicing the way we need to and the intensity that we needed to. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, and that, and like I said yesterday, that we came in and we watched it. I said, hey, this is who we are. If we didn't run any more games. Now, you know, we're going to work, go back to work and, and have the intensity and uh, the toughness and the mentality that we want to be the team that we set out at the beginning of the year. David, Mike, and Wes. Uh, Rick, you comparing the streets defensive numbers the last year. Why do you feel like they have been down compared to the year Defensively? Yeah. Uh, well, we are a better offensive team, and I think our guys think that, that we can just rely on that. Numbers have a lot to do with it. You know, we had two players a year ago that, whether they played many minutes or not, they kept the other guys on edge, and, and James Daniel and, and, and uh, uh, Chris Darrington, because, you know, we guard it. And that's what we got to get. We haven't. We we just haven't played with the same sense of urgency on the defensive end the way we need to. We have just little things, just as simple as where we pick the ball up, where we where we want to be guarding on the on the in the, in the half court, uh, how we want to play certain things, you know, ball screens. It's just we, we haven't had the edge that we had a year ago. Because last year we we really struggled at times to score and. Um, we just shot the ball, and that's we did that Saturday. I mean, some of the shots and things that we were doing, we weren't sharing the ball, getting shots blocked, not playing off two feet. Every guy thinking, I got to go make something happen. I suppose we have to make something happen. But defensively, it's a it's a mindset. There's no, it, it, it's absolutely a mindset, and we uh, haven't had that the way we need to really all year long. Rick, you guys really had a six-man rotation. It seemed like Saturday. Is it a concern that those guys are playing heavy minutes in the top that's, six? Uh, that's my fault, and I want to fix that because you know we need Eve, we need uh, John Fulkerson, we need uh, Derek, we we need Jalen, we need those guys. You know, we, we, and those guys need to understand that they're needed, but they all <clears throat> they also need to understand when they come to the game, it can't be any negative stuff for them. They can't come in the game and give up two, three quick baskets because they do. They can't stand the game. They need to come in and understand those minutes are really, really important. And we, and we need them probably more in the first half. To, and so it's important. But they have to embrace that role and whatever that is. But we still got to get back to where, I mean, Kyle Alexander hasn't been a factor in three weeks. You know, he's, got to, he's got to go back and do his job. He just simply hasn't done the job that he's capable of doing. And uh, but we need those guys. And it's up to me to get them in the game. You, you mentioned that Kyle hadn't been the same in the past couple of weeks. What has gone into that? And, and also, when, when you're looking at the game where you know Bowden and Turner are both missing shots, or was that just a coincidence, or was that a product of something that was similar? I think I think they missed shots because I don't I don't think they take good shots. I don't think we played together. We had a couple of times where we could have ran through the ball in one threw the ball out one time to Lamonte. It wasn't a great pass. It was down below his knees. And we always say, don't shoot a bad a bad pass. He had plenty of time to pick it up, shot fake one dribble for the defender, and you had Admiral and Bowden on the other side. We're not making that extra pass. When we started making some threes in that game with Admiral, that was one of the plays where we did that. And uh, and I think that they uh, understand at times they, they, they forget about Grant. Well, Grant will, they give him the ball, that's when we get, they get their best looks. And but we'll go three or four minutes and those guys don't realize that he hasn't touched the ball. And, he actually came over the other night and said, Coach, if you give me the ball, I'll, I'll create some offense for those guys. And, and he does. He doesn't necessarily have to shoot the ball. And, uh, but uh, when they're not shooting the ball well, they, they're, they're, uh, they're jumpy. They think i got to get shot up as opposed to just playing the game. And with Kyle, is that – I think Kyle, again, I, I don't know if I have the answer for that. I wish I did because uh, he's just got to get back. I mean, you think about it, he had two games where he was terrific. And from then on, it's been like a slow decline, and where you know he's not even he's not playing with the same energy and effort. Uh, and I think some of it is he went through a, a period where he was getting they got a couple a couple games where he had some tough calls against him that uh, that were tough calls. And then I think he goes in the game thinking maybe I, I don't 
you can't be as aggressive early in the game. And, and if you don't start out with the right mindset, you're not going to end with the right mindset. But I think he's let some of the those games where he got in foul trouble affect him, where he's just got to go play and, and again, have confidence in his teammates. If he, all of us, if, if you get in foul trouble, you got to believe that, hey, or you pick up an early foul, two fouls, have to set in the first half, whatever it may be, these guys can come off the bench and do, do the job for us. And, and we're going we're gonna to have to have a bench and no other reason to motivate guys to play all of it. Jimmy and Steve. Rick, would you talk about what Vanderbilt brings to the table? And given the fact they took you into overtime last time you played, how surprised are you they have not won a well, let's go back. That you know, they they lost a key player early in the year, and and, uh, and I think that uh, they again they were terrific against us, no doubt about that. And they've been in in some really close games. They've been there. They really have been there. They uh, again, they're playing young players. They're putting a lot on a lot of young players to, to do some things. But uh, again, it, it's tough when you when you. Spend your whole preseason, you know, thinking you're going to play one way, and even go into the season. Well, I think that, I don't know how many games they played with Darius Garland, and then all at once you got to remake yourself. And, and as, as long, I mean, it's hard to start remaking yourself once you spend all summer and all fall, and then you lose key pieces, and and then you've got to you got to change, and uh, then you're putting guys in roles that maybe they weren't expecting to be in, and, uh, but. Yeah, but they've been, they've, been, they've been in a lot of closer, even though they haven't won a conference game, they've been in closer games than people might expect if you really break it down and look at it. You said you would blame yourself in part for that six-man rotation Saturday. What have you seen from Eve, Derek, and since the, regarding that front court depth? I, I, I think Eve, Eve we got to get him back because he was playing a great role for us when Monte was out where he was really pressuring the ball, guarding the ball, doing those type things we need that from him. Jalen, Jalen. Jalen will be, he will play based on his defense. And, and we need Derek Walker to give us a physical presence. And we need John Fulkerson to be the guy that we know we recruited. I mean, you, I, I'll always go back to the freshman year when we were at North Carolina, and he was the best player on the court. And um, then he got hurt after that. And he, he can't have the mindset that he has a role to play. He has, I mean, just this is my role. He should be pushing every day to want to play more and more minutes and not be content with just saying I'm just a role player because he's too good to think that way. But, we need each one of those guys to embrace what if they have to do their job is for this team right now. All players want to do more probably. But the fact is you've got to do exactly what's needed for your team right now, and that's what we need from those guys. Time for smart. Well, you know, the first time that uh, when I first got here, uh, Dave Hart and John Gilbert were at Dave's house, and, and some people came over, and they, I was talking about different things, and they said, well, we have a tremendous guy that works with, uh, with basketball, and they mentioned Tom's, when he mentioned his name the first time, the last name, I said, I'll never learn to pronounce that, but uh, how, does, how does Siri pronounce it? Is that cow we have? Yeah, you know? but, uh, when Tom came in one day and Dave said, we don't want, and he talk, Dave told me of his situation, and they said, but we don't want you to act as if you know it, because he's the kind of person like to come in and talk on his own. And so a couple of days later, I was, one of the only few times that I was in that office, he came in, and at the time, I think he had a boot on. And uh, he came in and he said, if someone mentioned Jesse, sort of, kind of, but he went into it. And uh, through that time, he and I have shared a lot of really, Good moments together, and uh, like I said, when they did a bit of a big article on Tom, I don't think any of us really, 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 other than his closest people to him, knew how sick he really was. We saw it at times where a year ago, I think he missed some time during the last season where he couldn't travel with us. And uh, but you know what? He, he never heard him complain. I never ever heard him one time, even if I was asking how he was doing, he was fine. You know, and even though you could look at him and tell that he wasn't, he wasn't feeling great, and, and you knew when he had to go back to wearing a boot or something like that. But I remember that day uh, when he called and said, um, "I got to call," you know. And uh, then I remember uh, going over there. We, we were planning on going that night, and uh, but I don't think we went to surgery the first night. We were going to leave Nashville and, and go there, and then but we came back the next day. But I. But I remember that uh, we were we we had just walked into the hospital, and uh, 
and uh, his wife had uh, his phone. And one of our players called and said, or texted and said, Tom, can you send me some photos of me? <laughs> and I took the phone and uh, I texted back and said, well, I'm in surgery right now, I have my liver transplanted, can I get back to you later? <laughs> And that person wrote back and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope it goes worse. I'm like, I don't, did you say those texts? I still have them. Yeah. But uh, the fact is, I mean, uh, you look at it now, and if you knew what we knew and you see Tom today, I would say this, that you should always want to know that when you can donate something, when your time is up, you should want to do it because the, he's got a new life. I mean, he is a new man. He's a person. I mean, he's gotten to be better looking. And, uh, he, but he's a different, I mean, but he, he was a guy that was strong with it. But I am telling you, uh, watching how he lives and the fact that uh, it's given him a new life. I mean, was, he was, I don't know how much longer he could have gone without with what he had. And uh, so he, his story has touched me and a lot of people around him. And, and I can only imagine, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine my life without him in it. I really can't. And so I'm thankful for the fact that that someone did what they did and it was a match and uh, I would just encourage everybody to get order to in any way they can and, and give life to someone else when their time is up. Yeah, Jimmy. Got your radio show today, Jimmy? Yes, sir. You want to be on it? What time is it? Three to seven. Yeah, put me down. Which hour you want? Yeah. Oh. What time what time are we on? Three to seven. Yeah, put me down. I'll call you while I'm in practice. You talked about your team being selfish during the Kentucky game. During the course of that, how are you get them out of that? Well, when I say selfish, I, I should probably say that I think they, they, they got to a point where they felt because we weren't in sync, we never settled in on offense. It's every guy said at some point in time, i got to make something happen, as, a, as opposed to saying we've got to stay together and work the game. And you think about it, as, as poorly as we were in the first half, it was a four. It could have been a four-point game until the last play, and then we just had a terrible ball screen defense. But even with that, it's a two-possession game, and we come out and just not ready, and uh, we just <clears throat> never adjusted to what was happening within the game, and then you get behind, and then all at once everybody thinks, "Okay, I got to go do this," gotta, and uh, so that's how fine a line it is between winning and losing. It really is, and uh, so I don't. Again, I don't mean selfish from like. Uh, I gotta get my points or I gotta do this. It's like, okay, I gotta make something happen. As opposed to just saying, we've gotta make something happen as a team. We, and we never got all five guys and I got one on the court on the same page at the same time. Did you ever get any clarity from Jordan Bone as to maybe why he didn't push the tempo early in that game? Because even after the game, he kind of wasn't quite sure how to answer that question. You said he could have pushed it harder. Where, where did, when y'all watch film, did you find out why that happened? Well, I think there's a lot of it happens in the fact that, again, when you're talking about pushing the ball, yeah, he's the key, he's the catalyst, but guys do have to go with it. They do have to go. And so, again, he early I thought he was doing it, but I don't think uh, at the start of the game his decisions were great in terms of what he was doing with it. And uh, he, he's, get, he's gotten so much better in terms of starting to understand all that. But like I said, throughout the game as a group, uh, and we want our guy. We, I don't want our guys out there being robotic. I want them to play the game. But we just have to execute what we do, and the shots will come where they need to come from, and we'll be in a position to rebound. When somebody comes down the floor and takes a quick shot, and uh, guys aren't down the floor, and, I mean, it, and it happened a couple times. Going back to what I was saying, certain guys thought they had to make something happen quick. We were way too impatient. And against a good team like Kentucky, you're going to have to maybe get your second, third option and keep moving the ball in the flow of the game. We didn't get to flow like we did, and I will tell you this: every time we did do that, we got a good we got a good look at it, and that's where we've got to continue to have the discipline that we that we need to have in in games. Because every game you're going to be in here, you here on out is going to be a close game, and you've got to rely on each other. Thank you, coach. All right, thank you.